Welcome back to the 15th video about my dual engine control level IP68 project. In the previous video, we did these huge cutouts here in my center part. So we were finally able to attach the side parts to it. And now the whole thing, yeah, kind of uh, starts to look like the finished product. Anyway, uh, card here, link in the description. In this video, I want to make some small parts that go, uh, yeah, into those holes here. Yeah, the friction mechanism and we also need here at the back a uh, little plate for the strain relief of the cable. Enjoy! Let's start with that little plate here for the strain relief. So it's 17 millimeters long and 6 millimeters wide and the holes in it for M2 screws to go through are 11 millimeters apart. And I will take the, uh, the saw out, the leftovers from the center body uh, to produce that plate. Yeah, first on the table saw and um, then we go from there. First we saw off an approximately two millimeter wide plate here from that leftover. Then we saw off a six millimeter wide strip of that plate. And we shortened that strip to 17 millimeters. So here's our little plate and now we have to mark the holes. Uh, yeah, they are 11 apart, 17 is the length, they are probably 17.1. Who cares? Uh, the width turned out at 6.1. Uh, so there are three millimeters from each end. So we have to mark a three millimeter center line. We probably should do that from both sides. And then we need lines three millimeters from each end. Looks good to me. The holes themselves will be a job for my small drill press, I think. That thing is a little bit of an overkill for these little holes. But the principle is the same. I visually line up on my lines. Yeah, hit it there, I think. This is all super tiny here. And I'm drilling here with 2.5 millimeters. I also need to countersink these holes. <laughs> these are my screw heads here. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Uh, anyway, I do the other side of camera. <clears throat> I will file the radii at the ends uh, by hand and to have some guidance I just put in here a screw and some washers with uh, approximately the right radius. I think you get the idea. I do that off camera because uh, I cannot really do it here in front of the camera. And here's that little part in Zito. Of course, uh, can I reach with my screwdriver in there? Uh, the cable goes in through here from the bottom and comes out here. And hopefully that will <laughs> keep it in place. Next, let's make some disc and plungers. I don't know if you remember that detailed drawing here of the side pieces. Uh, I explained it in detail in another video, a card here, link in the description. Anyway, meanwhile, I added these details explaining what goes into my holes at the side. And there's a lot going into these holes. So here that's our 12 millimeter shaft and that's the outside of the piece. And yeah, we have four of those holes, so we need all parts uh, four times. 
Anyway, we have here an aluminum plunger, yeah, our friction element pressing onto our shaft. Then we have here a stainless spring. Uh, you saw those in a mailbag, I guess, a uh, card here, link in the description. And then we have here a little palm disc to uh, galvanically isolate our aluminium from the stainless steel. Because otherwise you might get something like galvanic corrosion here if there is some ingress of water. And uh, then uh, the end is simply here a grub screw. Yeah, for for compressing that spring and applying friction force. Let's start uh, with something simple, these uh, POM discs here for isolation purposes. I have here six millimeter POM round stock. I I think uh, I called it already the mailbag, but uh, link in the description anyway. I will first turn that down to uh, 4.9 millimeters. Yeah, I don't want to press fit here. This should be just loosely between the spring and my plunger. And then we cut off four discs. Yeah, that's basically it. I just gave you a time lapse of the first pass and I took really small passes and uh, yeah, a few tenths of a millimeter and really only a 0.05 millimeter path. That was the last one gave me a real nice uh, surface. There's simply uh, too much flex here in that thing. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah far too much flex uh, for the milling machine. But um, anyway, uh, it worked out. We're at 4.9 millimeter diameter. And now I will start uh, parting off with a parting off tool. But before parting off, I will clean up the face here. Also with the parting tool. Yeah, well, <clears throat> It's not what you should do, but I need a zero position here so I can move my parting tool, which is 3.2 millimeters in width, uh, inwards here 4.2 millimeters so I can cut off a one millimeter disc. I also use the opportunity right now to clean up here the edge a little bit. I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, yeah, that uh, is not working very well. Uh, so a little change of plan. I uh, will leave that stop here now. <clears throat> and we cut that off outside of the lathe. Uh, yeah, better is that. And just clean up the edges here and then I... Repeat that three more times. So we have uh, four of these discs with a little stop. Well, at least it looks very interesting. Yeah, through the flex here, which is of course out here the greatest and in here the smallest, I took a lot less material off here than I took off here. And so we have, uh, it looks something like, like uh, the muzzle of a science fiction gun or something. But uh, hopefully it will work. Now I have to think about how to part off these four pieces here. And I think I do that by using a saw. Found it. <laughs> I got lucky and was able to recover all four of these studs here. But uh, anyway, uh, they are very individual and 
Well, very, <laughs> very tiny. Uh, but uh, my thinking was, uh, yeah, with the parting off tool that obviously didn't work because of the flex. And so I, uh, th I thought if I just make them a little bit smaller here, they should here fit into my springs. Yeah. And indeed, after a bit of filing, which was really interesting, yeah, grabbing that basically with my fingernails, all four of my, well, discs, they are no longer discs, they now have here an extension, fit into my springs. Perfect. Now, I do hope that my five millimeter aluminum round stock for the next part, the plunger here, is a little bit more stiff and has a little bit less <laughs> flex in the lathe uh, than the POM 6mm round stock. Uh, but anyway, uh, so length should be approximately 12.5mm. It's not critical. Uh, well, yeah, that's a complicated operation, probably. Uh, I have to make a round nose here. I have a special tool for that, uh, for the lathe. Uh, we will see how that works, because it's only a radius of 2.5 millimeters. And after that, I just part it off. I will only show uh, the making of one of these parts here. And here's the overview over the whole setup. Uh, my 5mm round stock is over, uh, I think about 1 meter in length. So I took one of the cutoffs there with a hole in it uh, to give it, uh, yeah, <clears throat> some more stability because otherwise it will be flopping around here in the breeze, sticking out here. But yeah, going through the hole there in the back. It's quite stable, or oh, stable enough. Also, the uh, compound on my lathe is gone and has been replaced by a Proxon radio cutting, a radius cutting tool uh, for the mailbag uh, card here. Link in the description. Setting up that Proxon radius tool here is not really simple. Uh, to get a outside radius here, 2.5 millimeters, I have to align the tip of my tool steel 2.5 millimeters uh, from the center of the rotation. Uh. And the only way to do that is to align the tool steel visually. At least they have a little bit uh, a bull's eye here <laughs> at the center of the nut that is the axis of rotation. At least you can adjust the height of the tool steel with a little grub screw here. But in the end the height alignment is also just a visual affair. The last opportunity for alignment uh, on the rotational axis and uh, for the radius is here from the top. A little bit better than just visual. So you can play here one with the position of your compound table. And two, you can still adjust a little bit uh, <laughs> the position of your tool in the holder. So there's that if you come from one side, you are here just touching. And then when you come from the other side at a 90 degree angle, you're only just touching, okay? So this tool is now <clears throat> centered up quite good and uh, the radius is also at, well, I guess 2.5 millimeters. So uh, we can <laughs> start turning the radius. Ooh. And now we actually try to cut that radius. That doesn't look too bad. There is a, maybe here at the tip there is a little bit left. So I give it a little polish with the 160 grit paper. 
Well, polish is not <laughs> the right word here, but yeah, oh, let me try something else. Okay, I forgot to <laughs> press on the record button, but I polished it up with some steel wool here and now it's uh, really, really nice. Next, uh, sanity test. Does my five millimeter aluminum round stock fit into a five millimeter pom hole? And I don't want a tight fit here. I w don't want a loose fit here. I want a frictionless fit here because the plunger is supposed to move here. And that's not quite what I have. So first let's try to polish it up uh, just with a steel wool again. Maybe that's already enough. Eh, 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 eh. Not quite. So we're back to the 160 grit paper. And I will be very careful here. Let's see what we got now. Okay, there, there's still something missing. <laughs> Yeah, that is good. That is also good. Perfect. I decided not to remove the now perfectly aligned radius cutting tool here to put on my compound again, so I could uh, part the tool off. Instead, I will just, uh, yeah, use the saw here to saw the piece off. I marked here my 12.5 millimeter mark and then we somehow will clean the whole mess up afterwards. And here it is, <laughs> the uh, first plunger with still, yeah, <clears throat> a rough end. We will clean that up as I mentioned afterwards. I will now make four more of these. And here they are, my four plungers. Uh, I just need to get them to the right length now and clean up the end. I've put my first plunger into the chuck here and beforehand I measured its length. So it's 13.9 millimeters. So to get down to 12.5, I need to take 1.4 off. So I will just touch off here and then work my way in 1.4 millimeters. I forgot to press play record on the first one. So that's already the second plunger and I have to take 2.3 millimeters here off at the back. I moved it a little bit out here so I can clean up the edge with the file now. And here they are, four plungers. Uh, three of them came exactly out at 12.5 millimeters in length. I think one got a little bit short at 12.4 uh, millimeters, but um, yeah, that's okay. Before I leave you for today, uh, let's try out the parts we produced. Uh, so we put here a little plunger in, then a little spring, yeah, with a nipple on top, of course. And that is closed up with a grub screw. And if I turn the grub screw in, then the plunger should at one point appear here. Well, <clears throat> we'll see <laughs> if my drawing was correct. So do you see a plunger? I don't see a plunger. Oh, I see a plunger. Wonderful. And this should be spring-loaded in theory. And indeed, it is. Ah, okay. That's nice. 
doesn't wobble from the right to the left, but uh, easy to rotate, so no friction here. Wonderful. And that's it for today. The small parts go for now back in a little baggie here until we finally need them. Uh, I have to think about what we'll do next. Anyway, till next time, bye.